channel. I've noticed that I've got quite a few new people at the moment. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Rebecca and part of the Whistle family. Hi. <laughs> Today we are out and about again, finally. It's really good to get out. Um, we are actually visiting Bungie today uh, because there is a Norman uh, ruins, some Norman castles, and we have been learning about Normans all this week uh, with that one. So we're going to take him to kind of have a little look and explore the area a little bit more. It's also my 100th subscriber um, Q&A video. So I'll be dotting in some questions um, within the vlog today. And yeah, we're on our way to it now. So we will see you when we get there. So we've just parked up um the castle's actually in the middle of the town center it's not um on the outskirts or in like a kind of more natural setting so we're gonna uh park pay for parking right now and then we're gonna have a little walk and see if we can find it it's called big odd i think big odd b-i-g-o-d castle and it's in bungie which is technically in suffolk but we're kind of close to it it was only like a 20 minute drive which was quite nice oh, that was So it turns out you can't actually go into the castle, it's actually been uh, padlocked shut, which is a real shame because the information board was in there as well, so we could have learned a little bit more about it. Um, but we do know it was a Norman castle, and I think Harry was just excited to see it anyway because we have been learning about it this week, and he's got really into it as well, so it's really nice to see. Um, but we are on our way to Castle Hill, um, so we're going to have a look and see if we can go there. But obviously not everywhere we go is like an epic adventure sometimes we have a few failures and i think today <laughs> was one of those days where we're kind of just seeing where and how we go and where we end up i know but at least we saw it which was cool yeah maybe mm. no don't touch it <laughs> So we think Castle Hill was this hill that we were trying to um, get to, but it was padlocked at the top, but we thought it might be like a big area further down, but it actually just comes out onto a road. Uh, so that's another failure. <laughs> So we're making our way down hopefully to River Waveney instead and there may be some more outdoor space where the kids can kind of explore and we can have a little look and um, so we're just going down this really narrow path and I think Kev's already kind of given away that it goes to nowhere. Ow! It goes to the water. What literally? Yeah. Found the river! <laughs> Yay! So finding the river wasn't that difficult. Uh, we're actually on the river. Um, so we're going to try and find somewhere else. Obviously today is just not working out. But as I said, I have some questions that I really want to answer. And I've got a couple from a lovely lady called Jenny. And her first question is, um, what do I plan on doing with homeschooling? Am I going to continue on uh, with examinations and GCSEs and things like that? Um, it's a question I don't get very often, but it's a question I think of a lot myself. In terms of how we're going to do things, we don't really know. It's always obviously down to the child and we try and do as much child-led homeschooling as possible. So it will be down to him as to whether or not he ends up entering a secondary school or um, entering a school to go into examinations and things like that. It's always going to be um, Harry's choice. But if we do end up homeschooling him um, throughout the whole of his um, kind of education life, we actually um, take into consideration what they actually would like to do and what kind of career options they would like to go down towards. So 
say if you wanted to be like a accountant or something mathematical based we will kind of look at all the options as to how and what he needs to kind of get into that career path so it's going to come down to whether or not he's going to want to do certain things and um, certain careers or certain skills he really really wants to learn and if he finds one that he really really likes obviously then we'll kind of look at what entry levels he needs uh, the exams that he's going to need to pass and what kind of skills he needs to build in order to be able to get onto that course. So Harry's going to be 10 this year um, and in another year he will actually be going into like secondary school. As far as I'm aware he's quite comfortable and happy being homeschooled at the moment and we will look at things like um, kind of getting some skills up to a similar level to what he should be doing at secondary school but we'll do it still by like a child-led unschooling way we're hoping that maybe he'll find a passion or a job or a set of skills he's going to really want to do and that's kind of the way we're going to go about it um, and just kind of see how it unfolds but we aren't against him going and getting his GCSEs and we're definitely not against him wanting to join a secondary school if he wants to it's kind of his choice and down to whether or not we feel like he's going to really need it or not so I hope that explained um, a little bit about what we intend to do in the future with homeschooling for you. back from our trip to Bungie as you could see it was a little bit of a fail and um, it was really cool to see the castle the kids really enjoyed that part of it and I suppose seeing the river very close to where we were standing was also really cool and um, but we're back now and uh, the kids are just having lunch and I'm going to finish uh, this Q&A with the next question so for the next question I have brought in me <laughs> I've brought in Kev to help me with this question because it's kind of a question that uh, involves the both of us usually should be. Should be. Doesn't sometimes. You said sometimes. Yeah, because you don't have to have a man to be pregnant. So you get like sperm donations and stuff. That's better. Oh look, here he is, big bear. <laughs> I hate doing this with you. So this question was also from Jenny and she asked whether or not we were going to have any more children. <laughs> oh, okay. Look at mama. <laughs> and we were supposed to be around. He said, tie up, tie up. Oh no. Yeah, I want more. <laughs> Doesn't sound most, very convincing. Most guys say yeah. Do they? I thought most guys say no. I think when we were younger, we did want a really big family. I think we wanted like six kids at least. But since having three, I think it's kind of opened up our eyes as to like having to have a lot of time dedicated to each one. And obviously we homeschool as well. So our relationship with our kids is a lot more intense than others would be. I think in the future, I would like to think about maybe one more, but um, that won't be for at least a couple of years. I also don't naturally give birth ever. Like I've always had to be induced because I don't seem to have the right hormones or whatever. It's never been really um, explained to me, but every baby I've had has been uh, through an induction. Um, which is more painful and a lot more stressful. I've not had traumatic births. I've not had like really bad births, but it's just been um, a, a very different experience to what I wish I could have had because um, I've always wanted to do home births and water births and, and just more naturally. So I've got to take that into consideration that my body uh, is brilliant through pregnancy and it's um, I'm very, very lucky to be able to even have children um, and we fall uh, pregnant quite quickly it's not a very difficult journey I know others that have had an extremely difficult journey with um, pregnancy so I am very grateful and very lucky every day that I've been able to do it three times it is one of those things that, that I have to take into consideration that my body isn't built for birthing very well um, I also I have breastfed but again that's also uh, very very difficult my milk production was never as huge as a lot of other women's and um, I struggled with that I managed to 
uh, luckily but um, I know again that can be quite difficult for us as well but we do love babies and we love our children very much so yes. probably one more but maybe more well that you're not giving birth are you so maybe one more and um but not for a very long time to think about at least a couple of years and we also need to think about our living situation as well um we are at my parents it's not an ideal spot to fall pregnant in and i would love to get ourselves established we've just come out of debt we'd like to kind of have a bit of a life before we think about kind of tying ourselves down with a new a newborn so my lovely assistant is now working so it's just me again and the last question which was also sent in by jenny may i just say thank you so much for my first uh, set of questions as well i'm very honored to be able to answer them for you and i hope you get something out of them hopefully maybe <laughs> And her question was whether or not we had a set routine with our children when they were babies or whether we actually um, kind of just went with the flow. And I can really feel how hard it is um, at the moment with your little seven month old not sleeping. I really hope you push through it. And every mum is a superwoman, so I know you'll do really well no matter what. In terms of routine, I've said this before with homeschooling and things like that. We're not really the best family to talk about routines with. Um, when my babies were babies, I um, I very much took a very natural approach. A lot of just sitting uh, with baby for a very long time in the early days, lots of cuddles and skin to skin. We did co-sleeping a lot of the time with our babies, even from newborns. I actually co-slept with my youngest two, so my daughter Ella, who's now four, and my son Oslo who is nearly three I co-slept with the both of them until they were at least 18 months nearly two years old so they were always in our bed with us and we kind of didn't start establishing uh, like sleep training and routines until they were just coming into about two years old the reason for sleeping with them for that length of time is just to kind of establish a really strong bond and also take in all the newness and love and affection that babies actually provide us. It's something that I've always loved doing. I've always co-slept and also breastfeeding worked really well with co-sleeping because you could just kind of, you know, plop it out and feed baby really well. So in terms of napping, my children actually stopped napping quite early. Um, I know your little one is seven months old. I think my children probably got to about five, six months, maybe seven to eight, like your little one is as well and they stopped napping altogether. My son, who's the youngest at the moment, is the only one that ever napped, and he still naps occasionally when he's very, very tired or he woke up extremely early, but 90% of the time, my other two children never napped. We would always go from early in the morning all the way through, and the only time they ever slept was in the car, or if, again, they had like a really stimulating day, or they woke up extremely early. That would be the only times they would ever really go for a proper nap. We also weren't the kind of people that actually push naps. Um, we let our children kind of naturally decide how their bodies felt and if they didn't want to nap and they felt like they could continue on through the day, then we would honestly just let them. I think the natural style of parenting is my favorite way. I'm not saying any way of parenting is the best. For me, it worked out the best because I love kind of the really slow, um, child-led, intuitive parenting style. And I also enjoyed co-sleeping because my children would never sleep in a crib. They never slept in a cot and they did not go in Moses baskets, uh, nor did they like prams. So we always kind of carried them with little carriers or they were just in our arms pretty much 90% of the day. So yeah, that's how we did things when our little ones were a lot younger. And if I ever had another baby, I would definitely do the same things again. I would make sure that my baby leads the way with what they want. I think Oslo didn't eat like solid foods until he was nine months old. Obviously, you're supposed to start at six months. He was not interested in food until at least nine months old. And we could have like panicked and, and kind of gone against his intuition and made him eat food. But we kind of left it, spoon fed him little bits here and there each week until he realized actually food is something he really wants to get into so i hope i've answered all your questions well enough i'm so happy to have got questions and i am so happy to have over 100 subscribers now i've really enjoyed my youtube journey so far and i really hope to continue to bring you meaningful and interesting content occasionally with some dabbled stupidity and goofy things
<laughs> that is also the end of the video today and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do have any questions that I didn't manage to get a chance to answer on here, then please leave them down below. I always comment back and I also have an email address uh, which I link down below if you want to send something to me privately, if you're not keen on kind of leaving it down there, which I understand. We will be back next week with a new video. And yeah, I hope this community really builds. I love talking to you guys. I've had a lot more comments recently as well, and it's great to kind of hear from you now. Um, you kind of get over the 100 threshold and people um, are a lot more confident and comfortable talking. So that's really great. That's what I really wanted was a really strong uh, tight-knit community and yeah it's been a brilliant opportunity to be able to do this so far so we will see you next week guys and we hope you have a good one bye bye right you ready because i hate doing this with you <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else does this in their videos, you are the only idiot that in the village. <laughs> <laughs>